and they wanted to give it to us. I was like, hell yes. <laughs> hell yes. Like. Hey guys, Kelly C and I'm back with another story time today. We're going to be talking about how I was able to get all my furniture for free as a newly landed immigrant in Canada. So the last story time was really interested. I spoke about how I was almost homeless, my family and I almost homeless, our first night in Canada. And then that was the day one. So that was the first day we were in Canada. This story is about day two, where we actually stumbled across a really unique way in which we were able to get all of our furniture for absolutely zero dollars and zero cents <laughs> so if you're interested in knowing this stay tuned and don't forget to look until the complete end because i'll be giving some more ways in which you as well can get if not all most or some of your furniture for free and i know as a newly landed immigrant any help is good help right <laughs> turning away help is just not something that we do because there's so much uncertainty in the process and you're trying to like hold on to your little bit of savings and not spend excessively on things like furniture watch until the very end for that information again my name is kelly it's my family and i we moved to canada two years ago we landed in calgary from my home country of trinidad and tobago and we currently live um, in Edmonton, the city of Edmonton. So where I left off the last video is we were at the hotel the night that we got here. So we came and I linked that video to the end so that you can see the whole story, the whole shabam of what happened. We were almost homeless. The following morning we woke up, we went for breakfast and we had to um, check out of our hotel at 11 o'clock but our airbnb check-in was like five o'clock that afternoon so there was this huge gap in which we honestly didn't know what we would do and again we had no credit cards we had no friends or family in canada we had no vehicle to move around so it's not like we could go sightseeing we and we just didn't feel comfortable exploring because it almost felt like if you're wandering into the unknown right i don't know if y'all have ever experienced this like with traveling even if you go on vacation but you feel like awkward you feel almost like an intruder in your own space right <laughs> like you're afraid to venture out because you just don't know what to expect you don't know if you'll get stranded you don't know what to do and that is how we felt um and this was the first time we ever came to canada by the way when we landed so we decided after we had breakfast that we would actually just sit in the lobby area of the hotel <laughs> it seems so silly now we would sit there and wait for the four hours difference and then we would hire a taxi to take us from the hotel to our airbnb um which is where we would stay for two weeks until we found an apartment and jobs and all of that so we had two weeks rented an airbnb i hope this is making sense because i'm just telling it as it is it's not scripted right um so we are sitting in the ho in the lobby of the hotel we are checked out all of our bags are there um the kids car seats strollers everything you name it because we literally packed up our entire life from trinidad tried to pack it in a couple suitcases and moved to canada so you can imagine we had a lot of bags there was a lot of clutter and we're sitting down there in the lobby of this hotel and we're just waiting out our time the kids are fussy um because we're forcing them to stay in this small space my son was one at the time and my daughter was three so we have two young kids we're sitting there just trying to buy our time and while sitting there i noticed like people it starts to get a bit crowded right and um i'm a very friendly outgoing person so i started up a conversation with one of the persons that kind of entered into our space and it so happened that there was actually a church having their Sunday service in one of the conference rooms in that hotel where we were staying. So, you know, I was telling them that, you know, we are newly landed immigrants. We don't know anyone. Um, one of the girls from the church actually was a uh, Bayesian. She was born in Barbados. So I was like so happy to find someone from the Caribbean, even though she had lived in Canada her entire life she was born in barbados and i just striked up a conversation with her and i was talking to some other members of the church telling them that you know we don't know nobody like basically <laughs> you're not the first people that we know you're not the first people that we speak to you're not the first people that we we are made friends with right basically and the pastor of the church came out when he heard that there were newcomers um in the lobby and he came out, he introduced himself. I remember this guy to this day, his name is Akosa, Pastor Akosa. And he said that they would try to help us out because, you know, we were just getting settled in and whatnot. And he took my email address and that was that. 
right we hung out we hung out with them for a couple hours they left eventually we still stayed there and then we went to our airbnb um so i didn't really expect much to come out of it i also exchanged numbers with some of the members of the church just because i was thinking that at least it's somebody i knew somebody like somebody even though we're not close friends it's like okay i have a contact of somebody here in canada so God forbid something is to happen, I can call someone else other than 911, right? <laughs> so I kind of kept in contact and started to have conversations with them, starting to make friendships. I'm still friends with some of them to this day, to be honest, and best thing ever. You need to be outgoing. That's like one of the number one tips as a new immigrant. Be outgoing, be outspoken, talk to people, make friends. So I didn't really expect anything to come of the offer to help us um but a couple days later someone from the church actually emailed us and told us asked us if we had gotten any furniture and stuff as yet for our new apartment at this time we were still in the airbnb and we had two weeks to stay there um and within that time i was like looking for an apartment trying to figure out how we were even supposed to get approved for an apartment without having jobs right <laughs> i was still trying to figure out all of those things um so when they asked me if we got any furniture man so obviously it was no at that point we didn't even have an apartment to start with we were literally just figuring it out when we finally got an apartment they informed me that some of the persons from the church they would have had like some extra furniture in storage and they wanted to give it to us i was like hell yes <laughs> Hell, we yes. need it. Like, and we did not really expect it to be so much, but the members of this church combined with all of their like stored furniture that they weren't using and like things they wanted to like change or redecorate their house because Canadians redecorate like for almost every season apparently. So like things that they just weren't using anymore because it probably wasn't matching their color scheme or things they just weren't using and in storage, they gave it to us. And we got everything from a bed to couch, dining room set, TV, wares, toys for the kids, everything in our house from this church. And the church was not big. It probably had 20 members in this church. My God. And I tell you, if, if there was a way to, to, to even, <laughs> how to explain it, how I felt. So grateful. It was like, to this day, I still owe those people a great deal. And uh, we just can't explain how grateful I was and still am to those members of that church. They literally were like my first friends, my first um, everything. And they helped us out such a great deal that I am forever in their debt. Um, I actually went to their church a couple times because the church was a bit far from where we found an apartment um, and we didn't have cars. So they was like, I can't get to y'all. And then eventually after six months, we moved out of Calgary altogether. But I am forever in the debt of those members of that church. And it was such a great help that I would recommend for everybody to reach out to your community, whether it's a church community or your physical community around, because Canadians on the whole are very willing to help and assist when they hear that you are a newcomer. Um, a lot of the times though, newcomers feel like ashamed of something that they need to hide. When contrary to that, when persons hear that you're a newcomer, they are more than willing to help um, and to really assist you. Even like when approaching um, places to rent or um, other opportunities. Let them know that you're a newcomer so that they, they may have policies in place to deal with you not having a credit score, um, not having any employment history in Canada and all those other things because they understand that you are a newcomer, right? So that's like my number one tip. Let persons know, talk to persons, reach out to your community and get that help that you need. Now for the fun part. Now I'm going to give you a list of opportunities that you can maximize on to get your furniture um, partially free or greatly reduced. I just came for a coffee break. But yeah, so now one of the things that I'm going to recommend for you all is if you're looking for free furniture as a new layer and an immigrant, definitely check out kgg.ca. I'm going to link it below. Um, on there, you got people like bartering, people are like exchanging things. People are also giving away furniture or selling it used for very cheap. Definitely check it out. One thing to be careful of though is that I won't recommend taking or accepting mattresses for free um, or used just because there's something here called bed bugs. 
which I never knew about before. <laughs> but trust me, just don't take any mattresses. Go to Walmart, buy a mattress in a box. You'll thank me later. All right, so yeah, let me get this coffee and then we'll get back. Tax churches, check communities. Um, if you belong to a church that is very close knit back in your home country, reach out to your pastor, the head of your church, whoever that person is, um, and ask them if they know any like sister churches or like partnership churches in the city in which you are going to live. It's going to greatly help you to actually get into that community as soon as you land. Also, if you're a member of any groups or um, besides churches back in your home country, let everyone know that you're moving and ask them if they have any contacts of persons who live um, in the city that you're about to land in because those people will be able to really help you out in terms of getting furniture make it known as well because sometimes people forget or they just don't know or they they don't really anticipate how really hard it is um as a new immigrant who has literally nothing to even sleep on right <laughs> if you're like me you're landing you're going to airbnb and then after that you're on your own you're going to rent an empty apartment which is going to come thankfully with a stove fridge um and maybe a washer and dryer right everything else is up for you like you have to actually accumulate all of those things so get in touch with the community even when you get landed go make contacts with people in your community um look for any community groups any outreach groups any churches in your community doesn't matter what religion and let them know that you're in need of furniture a lot of them have access to those things just from the members the furniture that they're not using that they will be more than willing to give it to you um because they know that you are in need if you haven't already go follow me on instagram i'm gonna leave the link down there i'm very active on instagram follow me send me a message let me know hey i came from youtube i love connecting and talking with new immigrants and people thinking about immigration and yeah remember the journey is the price have an amazing day next i don't know i'm thinking about doing some more story times i love doing these type of videos they're so fun to, to tape and it's very unscripted it's easy to edit as well so look out for more story times and have a great day guys bye